Space, empty space, is simply the interstice between dark matter scalar particle intersections. The universe filling quantum soup provides the answer to action at a distance and is the ether and the all pervading medium of the propagation of all particles. Even quarks and leptons are completely permeable to scalar particles. The quote, empty space, close quote, between moons and the planets that they circle, or between planets and the stars that they circle, or between stars and the galaxies that they circle, is not empty. The empty space between galaxies and the electromagnetic meniscal membrane bubble that is our universe is not empty. All such empty space is totally filled. All space in the universe is filled with weakly interacting, negatively charged particles, skylars. These particles are an order of magnitude smaller than any quark or lepton. Skylars make up all but less than one trillionth of a trillionth of all the matter and energy in the universe. Skylar particles exhibit axial but not orbital rotation. Quarks, leptons, and every other particle in the universe pick up energy by passing through this universal quantum soup. This energy passing is by Faraday's quote, induction, close quote. When that towering genius, H.A. Lorentz, opined that, quote, the seat of the electromagnetic force is the empty space, close quote, he hadn't seen dark matter motor test results that prove that, quote, empty space, close quote, is actually scalar quantum soup. In 1920, Einstein himself at the University of Leiden said, quote, we may say that according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities in this sense. Therefore exists an ether, close quote, the scalar quantum soup. The quote, universal bubble, close quote, is the product of tiny anomalies in the universe, brought about by torque, the conservation of angular momentum, electromagnetism, and gravity, sparked by compression and impingement caused curvature of the scalar particle universal matrix scaffold and friction. Dark matter energy is a dynamic and electrostatic form of electricity, created by the eternal jostling of dark matter particles. I repeat once again, dark matter particles, which are eternally dynamic due to axial spin, comprise all but a maximum of one trillionth of one trillionth of all matter and energy in the universe. One must take pains to differentiate between this static electricity, which arises from the axial spinning dark matter particles and electronic current carried by electrons, which are made of scalar particles. Gravity and electromagnetism arise in dark matter scalar particles. The strong force is added in atoms. Again, dark matter particles and their static electric energy are the quantum soup that fills uniformly the bubble universe. Dark matter and dark energy are sprinkled with the visible spice of the universe, which we label galaxies, stars, dust, black holes, etc. As regular matter passes within quantum distances of scalar particles, the scalar particles spit a repulsively charged bit of static electricity. The expansion of the visible matter and energy will continue to accelerate until it nears the electromagnetic meniscal boundary layer of the universe. As this visible matter and energy approaches this meniscal layer, it will be turned back towards the next big crunch. This scalar quantum soup also contains the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, except for time periods preceding big universal crunches and small universal big bangs. This scalar quantum soup within the universal bubble from everlasting to everlasting is a home to gravity and electromagnetic energy as I mentioned earlier here and above. Residual cosmic microwave background radiation is created by every big bang and vanishes before every big crunch. The universe exists beyond and is greater than any arbitrary large value. In that sense, it is infinite. The universe is a bubble in the void, surrounded and contained by an electromagnetic boundary layer, 
The void beyond is unknown. The universe is Alpha and Omega, extending from everlasting to everlasting. Dark matter energy does not become diluted anywhere in the universe. Regular matter energy does become diluted and concentrated in its eternal journeys towards big bangs and big crunches. Time and space are eternal. At the scalar level, space does not bend or warp. Neither does it expand or contract. Scalar space does become warmer and more excited and cooler and less excited by big bangs and big crunches and the passing spice. The Naim Elamine Postulate. It is long established scientific dictum that a changing electrical field produces a changing magnetic field. This phenomenon is called electromagnetism, which, for example, makes it possible to send radio signals over long distances. The electric and magnetic fields keep producing one another over and over through space. My experimental work with my dark matter motor generator prototypes says that this fundamental principle of physics is wrong. H.A. Lorentz, noted here and above as a towering genius who was a mentor to Albert Einstein, once opined that, quote, the seat of the electromagnetic force is the empty space, close quote. As far as Lorentz's opinion went, it is now a proven by experiment truth. The scalar particle matrix of the universe has been most recently proven by the January 20, 2010 experiments conducted by Stern in Dublin. Google Stern Orbo. S-T-E-O-R-N-O-R-B-O. -O -O. Einstein has also noted above at the University of Leiden said, quote, we may say that according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities in this sense. There exists an ether, close quote. Wilson Sanus's speed of light. The speed of light is no mystery. The speed of light is simply the recorded rate of travel of photon particles through the scalar particle clear quantum soup universe. The 186,000 miles per second travel rate is the product of photon dark matter particles being pushed along with repulsive static electric charges, perhaps four to six billion times a second. As I have noted here and above, light travels at well-documented slower speeds through different types of materials. But light's photons are always fueled by repulsive scalar particle static electric sparks. Juan Moran's correction of Newton. The temperature of the clear scalar soup of empty space is almost exactly the same everywhere in our bubble universe. Why? Because temperature changes are propagated along the scalar particle matrix. It is like the heating of a cast iron skillet versus an oak wood handle. The Numa Perrier curvature slash compression of scalar space. Our sun was born from part of an interstellar gas and dust cloud, violently compressed by a supernova explosion's quote wind, close quote. Gravity compressed this cloud until it lit up. The exploding supernova, quote wind, close quote, pressures thus forced the curving of the otherwise uniformly distributed scalar particles in this incredibly minute portion of the bubble universe. This compression and the torque of the axial rotation of scalar particles engendered the triggering of the conservation of angular momentum forces that have sculpted our galaxy and the universe. When exploding supernova wind pushed and curved a scalar particle matrix, it pushed back against this compression of the scalar matrix. This process takes place, obviously, throughout the universe. In brief, this set the sun to spinning. Newton, another towering genius, propounded laws of motion. What Newton did not postulate, though, is how, what energy, from where, powers the movement of physical elements of the universe that had been detected or could be detected. CERN, C-E-R-N, among others, is hunting for a massive particle called a Higgs boson that holds atoms together. The Higgs boson does not exist. Tammy Ela Universal Knitting Tips Statement. 
It is the Schuyler particles that by their repulsive static electric charges, combined with their compulsive gravitational energy, wrapped around and donating their energy it, to every quark, lepton, photon, dust particle, comet, asteroid, meter, meteor, moon, planet, star, galaxy, and local group of galaxies that hold the elements of the universe together. In 1982, research results obtained by experimental testing of my team's first dark matter motor generator inexorably and immediately led me to conclude that the quote visible close quote matter and energy must be expanding towards the meniscal layer of the universe with slowly but ever increasing speed. My conclusion was validated in 1998. In 1982 my research results convinced me that Voyager 1 must be slowly but surely going faster and faster powered by Faraday's merely nominative quote induction close quote description. Faraday just gave a name to an observed phenomenon that he had no explanation for. He could have easily named it Dorothy. I call it Schuyler Space. I have found strong evidence that every subatomic particle and every atom in the universe is entirely composed of Schuyler particles in different numbers and in different arrangements. The only source of energy of every type everywhere in the universe is the Schuyler particles. The four known forces of the universe, number one, gravity, number two, the strong force, number three, the weak force, and number four, radiation, all originate from and or are powered by Schuyler particles and their energy. Experimental results of testing of prototypes of my dark matter motor generator by myself, Dublin-based Stern, and J. L. Nadine all conclusively prove that the input energy is multiplied by its output energy and work. Cameron Thames, Clay C. L. Thames, and Kayla Thames analysis of black holes. There is a black hole at the center of each of the approximately 1.453 billion galaxies that we have thus far detected, and of all others of at least a certain age. When any star goes through its life cycle, its dark dust and corpse is gradually spun back into the black hole at its galaxy's gravitational center. There is no bottom to a black hole. Black holes have an event horizon at each end of their tubular shapes. As matter approaches either end of a black hole, it spins faster and faster because of the law of conservation of angular momentum until it reaches a speed close to the speed of light. A black hole's size is represented by the circumference of its event horizons. The force of gravity is strongest in the middle of the tube of black holes and periodic universal crunches. Visible matter and energy only become invisible when they are ripped apart passing past the event horizons of black holes. A supermassive black hole is simply a collection of black holes that have sunk to a galaxy's gravitational center or a cluster of galaxies center. Anyone with a significant knowledge of Einstein's body of work knows that the very idea of black holes fell out of his work in 1916 on his general theory of relativity. That 1916 flash of genius is made more remarkable to me because I personally do not know of anyone who had proof of the death of a star before 1917. Moreover, how would anyone conjure the concept of a black hole absent the demise of a star?